In this video, I'm gonna walk you through a tutorial on the mediator design pattern in C-sharp. Together, we're gonna to walk through a really simple hypothetical chat application that demonstrates how this pattern works. Now, in some earlier videos that I put out, I was demonstrating how the observer pattern works, and we showed a couple of different flavors of how you could go create that. But with the observer pattern, something that we run into is that you have a bit of coupling with how the observer and the observables interact with each other. They need to really understand and know about each other, and therefore those instances instances, those classes are kind of coupled together. The idea behind the mediator pattern is that it starts to separate this out a little bit for us. So instead of having two objects communicating directly with each other, and therefore having full knowledge about each other's existence, instead they route messages through a mediator. So the mediator acts as this middleman in the system that you're communicating with, and therefore the messages go to it, and it's responsible for being able to route to the right places. This means that your objects that want to communicate only really have to understand how to communicate with the middleman, the mediator in this case. And by doing that, it's decoupling the things that want to talk with each other from each other. They're only sort of coupled to this mediator API that they have to work with. Before I jump over to Visual Studio, just a quick reminder about my free weekly software engineering newsletter. There'll be a link in the comments below. Okay, let's jump over to Visual Studio. All right, on my screen, I have a really small mediator chat application that we can see in action. The first part that you see on the screen is really just about 11 lines of code here that demonstrate how we're gonna set up these three different users, register them to a mediator, and then demonstrate how this user can send a message. But we'll see how this all works, and we're gonna start by jumping down right to the chat user. So I'm gonna expand this on line 46, and we'll check it out together. So the chat user that I have here is going to take in an instance of the mediator, and that's because we're going to use that mediator as our mechanism to communicate with other chat users. And the other thing we're going to do is every chat user that we create, we're gonna give a name, and that way we can identify it. So you can see that we're passing those in here, and we store those right here in these private variables. If I scroll down a little bit lower, every chat user has a send message and receive message. And what's important to note is that when we talk about sending messages, if you recall what I said in the opening part of this video, we are not coupling ourselves to the things that we want to be able to send messages to. So if you think about it, in a chat program, we want to send messages to other chat users. But if you look at the code that I have written here, you can see that to either receive or to send messages, we don't actually require any knowledge about the destination that we want to send to. In fact, the only thing that we care about is sending messages to the mediator. And that's because we trust that when we send the message to the mediator, with the right information, it's able to get our message to the right destination. And it's important to reiterate that. So when we go to send a message, we don't have to know anything about the type of the destination that we're sending to. And therefore, we're not coupled to the API of the receiving end. All that we have to do is be able to communicate with this mediator and trust that it's going to do the work for us. If we look at the receive message API, it's only gonna take in this message. So we're gonna to have to check out the mediator implementation to see how that ends up calling receive message on the user. Something to think about as we go forward and check out that mediator is to look at this console write line here. So this particular write line is saying that the current user, so that's where this underscore name comes from, has received a message and it's the message that we got from the mediator. What we don't have passed in is any information about the sender. Now, something that would create a little bit of coupling is if we ended up putting an I user here. So we're not gonna have an I user that is the sender provided like this but instead we can go make a quick tweak to make sure that we can get the sender in a different way. I also have no idea why I didn't use string interpolation here. I don't think I've written code like this in ages, so that's kind of funny to see, but that's better. That hurts my eyes a little bit less. All right, let's go check out the mediator and see how that implementation actually works. So the chat mediator is going to have a list of users that we're able to register. And if you're thinking about a chat application, and this could look different in whatever application you're creating, in our chat application, we need to keep track of all of the users that we can chat with. And I want you to think about either a chat room or a conversation where all these users are. And that's going to mean that when we send a message to the mediator from a chat user, we essentially want that to be broadcast to the other users. We're going to be talking with all of them at the same time. So that means if we go to check out this send message implementation on the mediator, it takes in the message that we want to send and then who the sender is. And the reason that we need to know who the sender is is because if we look at the implementation, and again, this is going to look different for different mediator implementations, we don't want to send to the sender. And that makes sense, right? So if we go to iterate over every user that's registered in the mediator, 
we just want to make sure that the sender who's trying to send that message to everyone else is also not going to receive the message that it's trying to send out. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for our little chat application because the idea is to mimic a little chat room or a little conversation. But if you recall, I did say that when we go to have this receive message call, we don't end up getting the user that's the sender. And I was stating that if we go to have receive message here on the user API, that would mean if we passed in an I user, we're essentially saying that we can only communicate by getting messages from other I users. So I want to pause for a second here because when I'm talking about coupling, I'm talking about the different types that we're talking with. What you'll see when we go back to the code is that the send message API that we have on the mediator is in fact a little bit odd because it does require that we can only be sending from an iUser. Now, the nice thing about the interface implementation here with iUser is that we can have different implementations of a chat user, but the reality is that we're kind of coupled to anything that's an iChat user. And we can break away from this a little bit further, in fact, by removing the iChat user from that API on the mediator, as well as getting sender information by providing a little bit of extra information instead. And the reason I wanted to pause to explain this is because the point of the mediator pattern is supposed to be that it's helping us decouple systems that want to talk with each other. If I want to send a message to a destination, I don't have to know the API that it's working with. I can communicate with a mediator, this middleman, something in the middle that I know how to talk to. I can give it enough information about what I want to send and enough information that it needs about getting that message to the destination or destinations. And from there, I don't have to worry. If the receiving end changes code, changes implementations, whatever else, I'm completely unaffected in my code. All that I know is I talk to that mediator and things work how I want. So let's jump back to Visual Studio, tweak this code a little bit and make sure that we can get the sender in our received message information. All right, we're gonna start by refactoring the send message API. And I was saying that I want to get rid of this sender information here. Instead, what we're going to do, instead what we'll do is just pass in the name. We don't need the whole type. We just wanna have something that can be identified here. And now that we just have the name passed in, we can go think about how we wanna change this receive message API to also take in a name from the sender. That way we end up having a sender and a message. And I'll rename this once more to make it a little bit more understandable. So with sender name being passed in, what we can start doing is checking the other users to make sure they don't have the same name as the sender name. Now, the one thing that we did not do is expose the name property on our user. And I'm just gonna go modify that on the interface first of all. So we'll go expand this and then add the property for the name. And then I'm just gonna quickly update the chat user to have a name property instead. Then I'm just going to go update the other two instances where we're using that property. Now, if we have a quick look while I'm down here, we can see that the send message API changed on the mediator. And Visual Studio is indicating that to us because this is not going to be applicable anymore. We're no longer passing in an instance of an iUser. Instead, we need the sender name and then the message that we're sending in. I'll just use name parameters here to make this a little bit more readable for this video. So far, so good, right? If we're taking a look at this API call that we have to make, this mediator method send message doesn't require any information about the type of the destination we're going to. So from the perspective of this chat user class that we're in, send message does not have any restriction or requirement about who can send messages or where they're going. And the same thing is applicable for receive message. But if you recall, we did want to make sure that we could pass in the name of the sender in the receive message method. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Now that we're passing in the sender name, I'm just going to quickly update this right line to make it more obvious where this message is coming from. And finally, one more spot to go update because I didn't use the built-in refactoring methods in Visual Studio is the interface that we've defined for the user. All that I need to do is put on the sender name right here, and that way when we're receiving a message, we know who it's coming from. Now, we're not quite done modifying this, so let's go right back to our mediator where we were sending the message. And where we left off when we were first looking at this was that we no longer are able to compare the user to the sender. We need to be able to compare the names and make sure that we're not sending it to the same name. And in theory, that should be good enough for us to be able to send messages now. And a quick note, if you're thinking about the scenario that we have, which is a little fake chat application, this means that we can't have users with the same name. Previous code that we had was comparing the instances. 
And that would mean that you could have three people named Nick, and that would be okay because if they were different instances of chat users, the receivers would not be the same as the sender, and that could have worked. With this change that I've now made, the username must be unique, and I would personally suggest if you're making chat applications, try not to compare against the user's name. It would probably be more wise to be able to check out a user ID, and the same pattern kind of goes for other entities that you might be dealing with in systems. Names are probably things that aren't always unique, but you can come up with patterns that help you have more unique identifiers. Now that this code's been updated, let's have a quick pass through everything just to make sure it makes sense. First, we've gone ahead and updated our iUser interface to be able to have a name property, and we also changed the receive method to be able to know who the sender is. And if we quickly check out the chat user, we should see that this is the same thing that we're seeing on the interface, right? So we have that name property, we are also now on the mediator, which we'll go check out right after, providing our own name as the sender, and then the message that we want to send. And this receive message has now been updated where we can see the sender name in this console write line. If I jump over to the mediator implementation, we can see that we modify the send message to be able to take in a sender name and a message instead of a message and an iUser instance. The other change we made was this name comparison, which we had just talked about, as well as this receive message call, which is now passing in the sender name and the message. You might still be saying, well, Nick, this chat mediator still depends on iUsers. In fact, we need to register iUsers into this chat mediator in order for this to work. So how could this possibly be decoupled? Well, that wasn't the point of what I was trying to get across. The point I was trying to get across was that for sending messages, we're no longer coupled to specific implementations of who can send and who can receive based on this API. And that means if you wanted to mix and match different ways to be able to send between and receive from different things, you could go ahead and make a completely different mediator that supports that. But now the moment you've been waiting for is what happens when we go and run this thing? Well, let's go find out. And thanks to our awesome refactoring that we did, we were able to get our mediator up and running and have the sender included in the message that's printed out. So we can see that the user one is sending the message, hello everyone, and the only two others that receive it, because you'll notice user one is not receiving it, but user two and user three receive the message, hello everyone, from user one. And unfortunately I left out the word from here, so I messed up the demo, but you can get the idea that this is coming from user one. All right, aside from my little mix up at the end there with forgetting the word from in the console right line, you can see that this is a pretty simple implementation of a mediator pattern. The entire point behind the mediator pattern is that we want to decouple our sender and receiver from each other. Now, the mediator itself is technically receiving messages, but it's acting as the middleman in the system for your communication. That way, the people who want to send messages or publish them out go to the middleman, this mediator, and the receivers are able to get that based on how the mediator sends those messages through. Something about the observer pattern that we observed in my last videos, or if you've seen this in other places, is that the observer and the observer bowl are very coupled together in terms of knowledge about each other. That can be okay in some systems, and in other systems you want to have this obvious decoupling. And that's going to wrap up the mediator pattern for today. So if you enjoyed the little refactoring exercise we did there, you can actually check out the course I've released, and that's going to be in the pinned comments below. And you can also watch this video next. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.